I've been gone for the past two months. I haven't been relaxing or just being lazy or anything like that. I've been here, stuck among all these creatures. Let me tell you how this even all started in the first place. This whole thing was inspired by Forge Labs. I've always seen his Minecraft 100 days. So a few months ago, I told myself it can't be, it can't possibly be that hard to actually survive 100 days inside of hardcore Minecraft with some mod, right? Surely not. So then I decided I'll create my own mod pack or put together my own mod pack, make it harder than usual and just simply survive for 100 days. I could do it no problem, right? Right? What the hell is hitting me? What is, what is hitting me? What is hitting me? Skellywag's coming. Stop, 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 stop. Leave me alone. Leave me alone, man. Oh my god. Another one. He's so fast. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Stop. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to quit and delete the world. This is possibly one of the hardest challenges I've ever done. These infected, these creatures, these, these monsters, they're ridiculous. They like to travel inside of packs. They're incredibly strong and they are very, very aggressive. If you don't maintain the infection, it'll bite you later in the end and it'll get a lot worse and it will take over the entire world. And I am not exaggerating when I say that. These things are actually truly horrendous. Just from all the failed attempts alone, I could make a whole video of that. That's how many it fails there were. Allow me to take you on this journey of a hundred days. Show you how my home turned into this, this horrible battlefield. This is Minecraft a hundred days with the fungal spore infection. Hey, look, this video took a long time to make, okay? Very long time. And I put my soul into it for you. Do me a favor, click subscribe. Especially if you end up enjoying the video too. If you think that you're gonna enjoy this, I, I know that you'd enjoy it. At least I'd hope so. If you don't wanna click it, just show me by clicking it. I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, day one where the journey begins. I'm kinda in a rush for the first few days. So I spotted some animals and immediately went to get wood make my wooden tools make my craft the normal minecraft stuff and then started killing some animals i only ever make a wooden pickaxe and an axe i never make a wooden sword i never saw the point in it but i killed some chickens one chicken i struggled to actually kill i don't i don't know how i ended up killing the rest of the cows that i saw that way I can be stacked on meat so I don't have to worry about food later. After I was done killing the cows though, I went to this area that had surface level ore. It had coal, osmium, iron. Osmium is like diamonds, except it can't do what diamonds do. So it's really only good because it's durable. But I did collect a bit of iron and osmium, which is really good because I was gonna need a lot a lot of that later so much of it i was running low on hunger so i made me a furnace instead of smelting the iron i just smelted some meat i cooked some meat not smelt i cooked some meat i didn't make all of it though because i just wanted to make it to where it was full i wanted to find sheep as soon as i possibly could because if it was nightfall i would not survive luckily i found three sheep of all the same color though so I killed those three sheep and just made me a bed. I picked up a little bit more osmium and iron and then headed to bed. The next day I woke up and immediately got to work getting more osmium. Like I said, I need a lot of this. See, the goal was to get diamonds as fast as I possibly could to make a set of tools that is incredibly strong to protect me against the strong hitting infected because some can take away 80% of your HP in one hit. After mining some of the iron, my pickaxe had ended up breaking, so I sat down in my furnace. I smelted some osmium and made me an osmium pickaxe, but I just 
pretty much picked up ore for the day. Next day, I made me all the osmium armor, but I also made me an osmium paxel, which is really, really durable and deals a lot of damage. I went towards a swamp. I don't, I don't like swamps because it contains alligators and alligators can hurt. So I immediately just like went to the edge of the swamp and just traveled across there while still passing an alligator. It was starting to get dark while traveling, but I did find even more osmium. I pretty much just spent the rest of the day or the night just getting the osmium and then went to bed. Next morning, the goal was to find diamonds and redstone, but I ended up running into some trouble. Ended up picking up more osmium. A lot of days you will see me pick up osmium. It just remember so much, okay? No more talking about osmium. Redstone was another very important thing that I needed for these tools. After collecting what I needed, I traveled a little bit more and found this like this hole, ditch, or crater. This thing was actually cool though. The waterfall was so loud to the point where I could not hear anything. No sounds, just water. I went inside the little cave that was there, hoping there was some diamonds, but there wasn't any diamonds, but there was redstone, which was a another material that was very very important there's a lot of mobs around but nothing too serious so very simple got the red sound that i needed though we're starting to get dark though so sleep next day i just woke up and traveled i found a small village it didn't have anything useful besides wheat and right next to the village was like area that had some iron i went inside to see if there was diamonds but the thing wasn't that deep it gave me it started to get dark, so I got out of there and slept. Day six, I continued traveling to look for a place I'd want to settle down, but also mine to gather diamonds. I stumbled upon another village, but it was also useless to me, so I just grabbed all the weed and left. It started to rain, but it wasn't a thunderstorm. After traveling around for a bit, I decided to just start mining since I wanted these diamonds before things got hectic. But by the time I started to mine, it was getting dark, so I ended up sleeping. New morning, instantly into the mines. I mined and mined and mined and got nowhere. So I ended up sleeping. Next day, I just stumbled upon this little area while mining. did see an infected but one alone isn't isn't really hard and incredibly weak i nearly died by falling in lava oh thanks oh i i don't want to talk about it goblin trader appeared he didn't have much for me i just traded my raw iron for some iron ingots a really good trader i love the goblin trader but i did find diamonds really really early but my goal wasn't complete i still needed a little bit more diamonds to be safe so i continued mining for a little bit but it started to get dark next day i needed more torches just so things didn't you know spawn behind me while i was mining so i got out got wood made sticks to get torches went back to the mine and mined the entire day absolutely nothing the entire day of mining just nothing useful at all i don't even think i got osmium that day it was I hate mining in like the newer versions of Minecraft. I, I suck at it. So I just slept. The next day though, nothing, nothing, just completely nothing. I wasted time. I, I could have been doing something so much more useful. Just no. So day 11, I felt like I was just wasting time because the more I wasted time, the worse things would be off. I got out of the mines, traveled again, looking for a spot to get diamonds. Usually in later versions of Minecraft, I have luck just finding diamonds in like a hole or ravine. I didn't really find much besides another hole that had some eyes. Okay. 
There's gonna be a counter of like how many times I've said the word osmium. But I went down to this little hole and there wasn't much besides that. So grab that and then got out of there. Next day, I traveled, but saw this little camp. Didn't really have much inside of it besides some food. It had like apples, fish, and wood. Very weird food combination. I eventually found the broken nether portal too. The loot here was really good or amazing even. It had a golden apples, some enchanted weapons, golden carrots, and then of course the golden block. But the most important thing that it had was obsidian. The one thing that I absolutely needed, at least one obsidian block, lovely. Later throughout the day, I was needing some cooked food. So I sat down and placed down my furnace and got the cooking, but just one little encounterment here. Would you just, I, I should kill you for that. Don't do that again. Listen, you gotta understand. I'm killing you. <laughs> Raccoons were just taking my meat. Next day though, I entered this little cave that was right next to the place that I was cooking food. This, this had everything I needed. All the diamonds that I would possibly need. I just had to go down there safely and come back up. For me to do that, I got me a bucket of water, sat it down so I can have this little like waterfall that I can go down and just swim back up. But this, this is where everything just went downhill. I have to eat a golden apple. That's just super infected right there. There is so much happening down here. Holy shit. Oh, this is a lot of diamond. This is a big vein. I keep getting shot. Holy shit, there's just so much happening, man. Holy skeletons. I had to eat a golden apple. What do you got from your big man? No! Oh, wait, Weeping Angel. Perfect. I could have gotten way more diamonds, but I wasn't risking it. There was just too much happening down there. So I did it. I got all the diamonds that I needed, and now I just had to get to work. I got saved by a weeping angel. Those things, very useful sometimes, but they can also be a death sentence because they can take something very important from you. They could have taken my diamonds. I wouldn't even have known. So the next day I got to work to making the machines that I had needed. What we're gonna be doing is making refined obsidian. For that, you need heat generators and you need three of them. So I made my heat generators and built up my little, my, my small little laboratory next to a lava, next to a lava thingy. So I made my heat generator and my metallurgic infuser. For the metallurgic infuser, you're gonna need two furnaces, osmium, redstone, and some iron. For the heat generator, you're gonna need iron, osmium, wood, copper, and a furnace. We're gonna need coal first, so we're gonna have to use the coal as fuel. But it was starting to get dark, so I went to sleep. Next morning, got back to work. I put my iron in with the coal fuel and went back to getting to work. I went back to, you know, getting what I needed, but I saw some spores uh -oh. and ran uh -oh. off. Uh-oh, uh-oh. No, 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 no. So I could take it with the other machines. Iron with the coal gives enriched iron. The enriched iron goes back into the metallurgic infuser and gives you still dust. And then you put that inside of a furnace and you get still ingots, which is very, very important. You need that. But it was starting to get dark again, so I slept, woke up the next day, and made my steel casing. After that, I had everything that I had needed, so I put my redstone into the metallurgic infuser for fuel and put osmium inside of there, which gives a basic circuit. After the basic circuit, you get an enrichment chamber. If you put the obsidian inside of the enrichment chamber, you get four obsidian dust. 
which is very important. And the material that you usually use for fuel, you can put it inside the enrichment chamber and get 80 of the MB instead of 10. Very useful, saves resources. So with the redstone as the fuel and the iron inside of the metallurgic infuser, you get infused alloy, which is also another important thing that you need for the osmium compressor. You make some advanced circuits with that and then boom, you, you, done. You have all three machines that you possibly need. Now that my osmium compressor is sat down, we pretty much have everything that we need, all the machines that we need. So I put the diamonds inside of the enrichment chamber to get the fuel. I put it inside of the metallurgic infuser and then put my obsidian dust inside of there. Once the obsidian dust comes out of the metallurgic infuser, it's going to be refined obsidian dust. So take the refined obsidian dust and put it inside of the osmium compressor with some osmium and it gives you refined obsidian ingot. Yes, it's finally here. My first ingot. Now that I had my refined obsidian pickaxe, I was able to mine obsidian and get the rest of the fuel that I needed, but it was starting to get dark. Next day, I continued getting obsidian that I needed because I wanted to make a full obsidian armor, refined obsidian armor, and I had all the resources to do so. It was just the time that I was getting afraid on because if a blood moon was to show up while I was doing all of this stuff, Oh boy, I would have been beyond mad. For day 17, I pretty much just spent the entirety of just making obsidian tools. These tools are ridiculous. It was starting to get dark, so I, I ended up sleeping. The next day, I continued just making the refined obsidian that I had left. I wanted to just use all of the fuel that I had. Oh, I ran out of osmium. But I was I was fully decked out on my gear. I was I was stacked. I finished using everything that I needed and I made an oopsie. Well, nice. Now I have to make another heat generator. I assumed the water was gonna immediately just flow into the lava, but I was wrong. But after all is said and done, I picked up everything and then continued traveling. After traveling for a bit, I found this one area that I really, really liked. It was open, meaning I can see everything that's coming my way. So I decided this is gonna be my home. The next day, I wanted to continue building, but this, this, this happened. No, 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 I need to make a chest. I need to make a chest. I need to make a chest. I can't even make a chest. Really building my house and then it said blood moon rises at a distance. Actually, this is not a bad time because I can kill a bunch of enemies and get XP and then evolve. Oh, you gotta die. 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 Spores? Oh no. What died over here? No! Okay, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Okay, go, 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 go. Oh my god. I need to handle this fast. What the fuck? Stop. Now's not the time. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. This isn't even fair. Like, the whole day is a blood moon, basically. Is it over? The sun is rising. 
Okay. The sun, it was not rising. I thought it was rising, but it was actually setting. Where's the sun? I need the sun to rise now. Okay. Creeper, blow up. What the fuck is happening? I need a weeping angel to come and get me now. I don't think you understand just how many arrows is coming at me right now. I wish I had weeping angels on. Me. I really do. This is just too much. This is too much. This is too much. This is too much. Can't go. Can't stop. Can't stop. I gotta run throughout the entire night. Fuck out of my way, you see. many skeletons right now. Legitimately trying my best. If I had a door, I could like stay in the water. That's a horde of infected. I need a door. I need to make a door. Please. I need to craft a table. I managed to make a door and stay underwater for the rest of the time. I nearly messed up and got myself killed while trying to, like, lock myself in. Oh, shit. I fucked up. I fucked up. I fucked up. Luckily, I managed to keep myself safe. Uh, the blood moon started setting. Next day, I got myself out of my little hole, but I had to do a major cleanup of all the infected because if you don't maintain this stuff, it will be very, very bad. So day 20, I pretty much just continuously killed infected. There was just so many infected that I had to kill. Lots and lots of cleaning. Just so much cleaning. There's one infected that I am truly deathly afraid of, and it's the Vindicator. It's the, uh, the pillager with the axe, but he's infected. That guy, I wasn't risking it, even if I had very powerful armor. After I was done cleaning, I went to sleep. The next day, I wanted to make an aquatic base. Some, some little underwater you know, safety base that I can have if another blood moon were to rise or super blood moon were to rise. So I gathered sand and whatnot, preparing to build, but I spotted some infected that I had to handle. Where are you going? Don't run away from me, you pussy. Oh yeah, I need to make an enchantment table. I completely forgot. Oh wait, that's a skeleton horse. What the fuck? Okay. I, I spotted a skeleton horse. And I wanted the same one. I, I wanted one for myself. I a skeleton horse. And ended up scaring me. Heavily. There was also an infected inside of the village too, which I have no idea how it got there, but didn't kill anybody. Oh, yeah. 
starting to get dark, so I slept. Next day, I started working on my aquatic base. I went up the hill and saw this little house, and the chest had nothing that great, but it had diamond horse armor and some redstone. Ooh, diamond horse armor. Cool. It was getting dark, so I ended up sleeping. Day 23, day to build my little aquatic base. But I saw some of the little spore stuff. The infected ground was spreading. That was about it. I realized that the village had two iron golems, which I never seen before. The next day, I ended up killing the little traveling trader. I don't even know when he showed up, but he was getting annoying just all in my ear. So I ended up killing him. I pretty much finished the base, but there was water inside. At first, I didn't really know how to get the water out of the base. So I ended up just filling in the little base. That way the water just disappears. After filling it in, I took away the little stuff that I built. I wanted my base to be slightly bigger though. So that way I'd be able to jump. So I ended up digging a floor under, like just, just taking one layer down the floor. And I wanted my floor to be made out of wood. Finally, my little aquatic base was done. Day 26, I ran into spores that kept on generating more infected, making even more spores release. I got stuck maintaining this throughout the entire day. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, I have to kill it before it evolves. My whole day was just killing infected. Day 27, I made my enchantment table, but I still needed a lot of books. And there wasn't much cows around, so sadly, I instead killed a bunch of horses until it was dark. Day 28, I went out to get sugar cane, and, but I saw, I saw an alligator. And I wanted to know how much damage it dealt to me with all this armor. So I let it bite me. It didn't do much. But I also saw a baby Enderman. I gathered all that I needed that day, made my bookshelves, and then went to bed. Day 29. I needed to get more osmium to repair my armor and weapon, but I also need to get lapis because I want to be able to finally upgrade my armor. I didn't want to be anywhere near death again after that one blood moon situation. And knowing my luck, I was bound to get more blood moons. It was just a matter of time when I get the blood moon again, or even a super blood moon. While I was killing horses and cows for more leather, for books, I saw a broken nether portal. The portal had trash loot in the chest, but I saw some ditch that had lapis in there. So I quickly went in there and grabbed the lapis and got out. Went back to the village and repaired the iron golem, which honestly, I didn't even know you could do that. It was a random idea in my head when I just 
saw him damage. Day 30, I made more bookshelves and books and started enchanting my gear. Luckily, my Paxo got efficiency four and I have protection three book. There was another protection three book I could get, but I didn't have enough XP since I wanted my XP. I decided I was gonna stay up this night and kill mobs for the whole. No way. While fighting many mobs, I got teleported by a weeping angel. Luckily, I did take a screenshot of the coordinates of my house. Just, I'm so glad that I did that. So I was able to find home like really quickly before anything happened. I also found the weeping angel that teleported me and I killed it. On my way back home, I ended up seeing another village and I wanted to go back there to check it out. It was starting to get dark on my way, so I slept. Next day, I found the village. The village didn't have anything. It was it was quite useless. I decided I wanted to try and get a mending book for my gear so I wouldn't have to keep replacing or repairing my armor because of the amount of damage the mobs do to me. And getting diamonds is incredibly complicated. Mining for them is terrible or I just suck. And the only time I ever find diamonds is if I'm just running around the world. So I just wanted to try for a day or two to get a mending book from a villager. Day 33, I got my mending dealer to actually sell me some mending. Oh. 22. Now I needed a bunch of emeralds. Luckily, I had a farmer who wanted wheat, so I was also gonna plant some wheat, but I don't know how to plant wheat. I struggled with this for like a few minutes. I was just looking like an absolute idiot, so I went to Google to find out how to get wheat seeds, and yeah, that that's how bad I am at this game. I didn't have a bunch of bone mills, so I wanted to get more than just a farmer who wanted stuff for emeralds. I also saw these two villagers inside of a hole. Strange. I wanted to get a blacksmith. That way I could trade coal for emeralds. Luckily, I got that real easily. So I went out to get some coal. It was getting dark, so I slept. Next day, I mined for a lot of coal and almost died to fall damage. Very, very stupid. Once I got the coal, I traded it and got the emeralds after that. I got my first mending book, but I wanted a lot more to be set for the rest of my time and gathering the coal and wheat would take a while. So I ended up getting the guy who can trade clay for emerald. Now this, this was a lot easier and I was really happy to actually do this. I never knew what they were called. I think they're called like a mason or something. I gathered some clay and it was getting dark, so I slept. The next day, I continued to get a bunch of clay. They want 10 clay yeah, for yeah. one yes. emerald, and that's yes. infinitely easier. And so I went around making a bunch of people inside of the village of Masons. And for me to do that, I have to pretty much trap whatever villager is a Mason. I was a guy who was getting really rich really quickly. Very easy work. I thought this blacksmith was actually a mason, so I trapped him in there. Day 36. How did you get out? How did he get out? The mason that I was confused about getting out was actually out the whole time. It was the blacksmith that I actually locked inside of the house. One of the masons that I entrapped had like three villages inside of it total. I don't know how it got in there, so I let the two unemployed villages free and then struggled to get this one mason back Can inside of the hole. Please stop moving, man. Just let me trap you. Thanks, man. Move, raccoon. 
Why does that raccoon have an axe? I don't, I don't know, whatever. You can, if you can just stop moving for like two seconds. Yeah, yeah, I want to trade. No, come here. I want to trade. Yeah, trading. Yeah, trading. Nice, right? Yeah, okay. In the hole you go. In the hole you go. No, no, trading. Look at, yeah, shiny colors. Shiny colors. Go in there. Go in there. No, not here. No, not here. There, in the hole. There. No, come here. Come here. Yes, yes, yes. Shiny colors. Yeah, can you go inside of this one by one? Where are you going? Okay. Move. Move out my way. Okay, you, I, you're about to make me have an aneurysm. Can you just go in there, please? Yes, no, no, yes, stop! Okay, can you stop, move, get out the way, stop trying to communicate, you don't need to do that, all right? All you have to do is just stay inside of this one by one and don't come out of here, okay? That's all you gotta do, stop, no. Oh my God, great, great. I'm killing you, I'm killing you. Right. Yeah, that that whole ordeal was really annoying. I yeah. It was yeah. making me so incredibly mad that he just would not get back inside of the hole. I wish this raccoon can stop running near me with the axe. I don't want it. But I continue to do my work. My nice little dirty work. Continue to getting my little play and trading and yeah, all that stuff. Day 37. I got all five mending books. But I wanted another one for my shield. I thought maybe I could just make another shield and use mending on it, but I only had five ingots, so I couldn't exactly do that. It broke? Oh, wow. I can make another one. I have plenty of iron. Day 38, I got the last mending book that I needed. I made two golden apples and I still want enchantments. So I'm just gonna stay up for the whole night and just farm some XP. While up for this night, I I realized a very, very stupid mistake. That whole night, I practically got zero XP because since I had mending on everything that I was using, nothing. I got zero XP for staying up that night. I didn't move an XP at all because it just all went to my armor. Irritating, very irritating. The next day I wanted to go fishing to get some fish though. So I tried to make a fishing rod, but I completely forgot how to make a fishing rod. I was sitting there struggling to make one, but I eventually got it and went fishing. Then I looked around the village to look for a cap. I couldn't find one. Then I found one on top of the mountain or come hill here, with come here, come here, that come here, one house. Come here, come here, come here. And I stop, struggled stop. to get this cat. Come on. Okay, look. I have fish. I know you want it. Yes. I ended up taming the cat, and then I tried to go back to the aquatic base, but I somehow Where's my cat? lost the cat. It disappeared. Where... Where did my cat go? What? And then it just randomly reappeared. What the? It was getting dark, so I ended up sleeping. The next morning, okay. I went into my aquatic base, and then my cat teleported with me. But oh no. I ran into an issue. I had a cat velocity in its entire chest. Because one of my mods had disabled, I ended up losing an entire chest full of stuff. But it didn't have a bunch of stuff, like a lot, a lot. And luckily, I already had mending on all of my materials, so I didn't really have to worry about the pairs or anything like that. I've been wanting to go to the nether, so I traveled out, got some obsidian to make another portal, but it was starting to get dark, so I slept. I got back home and forgot that I had a name tag on me, so I ended up naming my cat Orangey or Orangey, or, 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 something like that. It, it, it's orange in Japanese, okay? That's your name. You like that? So I built my little nether portal. I was about to sleep because it was getting dark, but then uh, this, this happened. No, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. I 
super blood moon. You thought a blood moon was crazy? A super blood moon is just a blood moon, but on crack. No way am I surviving that. I am glad I built my little aquatic base. It was almost sunrise, so I went back out. I wanted to see what mobs was out there, like how how dangerous it really was. It was quite dangerous, it was quite laggy too. And we're gonna discover this lag later. But just look how laggy that is. Endure. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Holy shit. Okay, I thought that was <laughs> that little baby creeper. After all was said and done, I finally lit my nether portal and went inside. I wanted to go to the nether just so I can get these blue soul lamps because the shaders that I was using actually made it to where it would emit blue lights. But the second I got into the nether, I was greeted by weeping angels. And weeping angels in the nether can throw you out of the nether into a random part of the world. And I nearly died to lava too. Oh god, what the god. I found the soul sand extremely quickly. God, that hurts. After getting all the soul sand that I wanted, I built back up and tried to get home. But while on my way back to my portal, I I ran into some issues. an accident <laughs> and get hit that wasn't even my fault what is on me darkness great God. Can't see can't see I'm probably gonna have to eat this golden apple Have a, uh, oh. Fuck me. Where am I? I don't know where I am. I ended up getting teleported out by a weeping angel and it was dark, so I slept. Next morning, I went back home and again, I have a screenshot of my coordinates, so very easy to get there. I thought my mending dealer would have died because I was out for night, but luckily he was still alive. I had the soul sand that I needed for my blue torches, but instead of torches, I actually made lanterns. Very nice. I love the way it looked. Absolutely amazing. It was starting to be pretty laggy anytime I looked down and I wanted to know why. I started digging down, but it was starting to get dark. Next day, I continued mining down, but I ran into a pool of water and it was nothing inside of the water. It was actually clear. I didn't want to travel around with the water. I didn't feel like messing around with it. So I just went back up and gave up on it. It started raining when I was back up at the surface. I didn't, I, I really didn't do anything else. So I just slept. Day 45, I once again said, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna find out what the cause of this lag is. I made some normal torches and went back down there. But this time I mined directly under my aquatic base. It looked normal at first, but I wanted to go deeper. So I went back up, made a door and went back down there and started mining. But this time, this, this time I found out the cause of the lag. What? What? What do you mean I'm infected? By what? How? Oh, oh God, I found it. I found it. I found it. Ew, 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 ew. 
This is so nasty. Holy shit. This is horrible. I'm just sitting there like, hey, what's all this like? Is that, I gotta know if this is like, is this from the spores? Surely not, right? Oh my God. I don't know what happened, but I think during a blood moon, a spore spawned down there. So it's like really, really bad. And I don't think I can do anything about it. There was an entire nest below me, just living below me and it was thriving. So I wanted to make TNT and just blow it to pieces. I wanted the entire thing eradicated. So that was my new goal for the rest of my time. Day 46, I initiated my plan to make as much TNT as I could. So I was actually going to stay up for the night and kill as many creepers as I possibly can. While I was out hunting for creepers, I found out that I can actually make gunpowder. But by the time I learned how to do that, it was, it was kind of too late. So I just stayed up for the night. While out, one of the worst things happened to me that can possibly happen. I was teleported by a weeping angel and it took my ultimate tool. It took my obsidian paxel that deals like 17 damage. And I don't have any diamonds or obsidian. So now I have to get that tool back as soon as possible. So I had to put my TNT farming on hold. Next day, I went to the Weeping Angel, hoping that it would have my Paxel, but it actually did not have my Paxel. It was gone. It only dropped torches. So while sad and crying to myself, I went out trying to find some ditch to try and get diamonds. But I got distracted and just started killing some random infected with a bow, which wasn't too bad since I didn't allow them to evolve. Day 48. While traveling out, I found a bit of osmium and a small amount of iron, which is what I needed. But I went into the water and saw that it was really deep. Saw some redstone, which is another thing that I also needed for the machines again. But then I noticed something. Diamonds. If there was a lot of diamonds here, I could make my pack so and get back on track. It was getting dark, so I went to sleep. As soon as it hit morning, I went back into the water to pick up diamonds and noticed another spot of diamonds. All I needed was at least five diamonds. When I traveled to the second spot of diamonds and picked up those diamonds, I actually realized that I never picked up diamonds. My inventory was full, so I had to drop something out of my inventory and immediately go back to the other diamonds that I had found. After all was said and done, I still needed redstone and iron, so I got some more redstone and iron, but I also ran into an evolved defective. Luckily, it wasn't too much, but I actually got lost and I didn't know how to exit. I didn't know where I entered from, but I, I saw the door that I sat down and I managed to escape. After all was said and done, I got seven diamonds, which was perfect. So I immediately ran my little happy ass back home. Day 50, I got to work on building my machines to get my refined obsidian again from my obsidian paxel. I made my diamond pick and then went to the broken nether portal to get the obsidian block, then go back home.
I've made my nice little furnaces because you need a lot of those for the heat generators. Made my little metallurgic infuser. Then I have to do the whole process, the, the entire process over again to make the refined obsidian. It's a long process, but it's worth it because of how durable and strong this stuff really is. Day 51, I noticed that I was low on iron. So I went out to get iron, but I saw this little group of pillagers and I was, I was not about it. I didn't want to deal with them. So I went out looking for iron the other way. Found this little area that has some iron and osmium. I assumed that I had all the iron that I needed, but I didn't. So day 52, I was getting more words from what I can only assume was the infected's nest. It was just throwing words out at an alarming rate and I was getting terrified because I didn't know what was gonna happen. I was still low on iron though, so I had to travel in order to gain more iron, which was, oh, which, it was an okay thing. Because if I was out of the chunk with the nest, then the nest couldn't grow. Day 53, I just traveled for iron and got all that I needed. There was, Nothing more that day. Day 54, I needed my obsidian. Oh, that way yeah, I can I have my refined that. obsidian. So I went back to the nether portal and picked up a block of obsidian. I went back to my base and made the crusher, which was a tool that I needed or a machine that I needed in order to make the gunpowder. Thank God it's a blue moon. I'm going to bed. Day 55, I made the three tools that I needed in order to make my Paxel again. So I was quite happy that I got that, but still kind of salty that it set me back so much. But when trying to make my Paxel, I, I realized something. Did I make a... Okay, I made two shovels instead of a pickaxe, shovel, and axe. I wanted a mending book again. That way my Paxel can have mending. Getting yeah, that didn't, it didn't really go. take long. It was pretty quick. Uh -huh. uh, day 56, I continued to gather clay. That way I can trade it with the villagers. I was also curious to find out if I can actually make flint because in order to get the gunpowder you need to put flint inside of the crusher but turns out you actually can make flint what what yo hold up if you put gravel inside of the enrichment chamber you get flint and then you can take the flint and put it inside of the crusher and then you have gunpowder i did get the mending book i traded it with the villager and everything but i ran out of footage i i, I ran out of space on my ssd so i didn't get that inside of the video but day 57, I gathered the gravel, threw it inside of the enrichment chamber to get flint, then threw the flint inside of the crusher for gunpowder. Now I just needed a bunch of sand and obsidian to make obsidian TNT, which was a stronger version of TNT. So the next goal was to get a lava pool. So I spent the rest of the day looking for a lava pool and I was pretty bad at it. I, I didn't, I didn't find anything. The next day I saw this little chunky fish. I had no idea what this thing was, but I was very interested in it. Is that a catfish? Catfish ain't that big. Oh. I don't know what that is. I'm not going to kill it though. I'll let it live. Traveling and I eventually found the small lava pool and started mining up all the obsidian. day 59 i got a little bit more obsidian and then went out to get sand just a lot of these days i'm just gonna be spending gathering one material day 60 after gaining gravel later that day i learned that you could actually make the machines produce faster with some kind of card thing and it wasn't expensive at all to make later i i found out that making these things was more of a curse than a blessing you'll see why day 61 i made the little speed upgrade i put it inside of my enrichment chamber i wanted to be able to make flint quicker but i also made some obsidian tnt day 62 literally just gravel nothing else just i'm telling you for so many of those days and still some days i'm just making tnt I don't know why I spent so long. I know why, but I thought it would be completely, you'll see. Next day, however, I made some more TNT. I saw this hole and it was actually another entry to the nest.
I also accidentally set myself on fire. But I, I saw this horde down here. I was not about it. I was not, I would, no, it's not happening. So I threw one of my ender pearls and I got out of there. But I saw that you can make explosive arrows. So I wanted to make some TNT arrows. So I made some TNT arrows to try and see how useful it really is, but they weren't effective at all. So I made them and I found them pretty useless. So I just continued to make as much TNT as I possibly could that day. Day 64, I learned about other arrows that I can make like lightning arrows or ice arrows, fire arrows, just a lot of stuff there. I wanted to make some blaze arrows and lightning arrows. So I went to the nether to see if there's a fortress nearby and there wasn't but there was another fortress nearby so i so i took the chest from there and luckily they had a whole block of iron and a lot of arrows after that i got out of the nether and it was nighttime next day i saw some infected at my village and it also dropped spores of course it has to drop spores so i had to sit there for a while maintaining that stuff I wanted to make some more of those little speed upgrade chips, but I needed more osmium for that. So I had to go out and get osmium. Luckily, it doesn't cost a lot of osmium. So getting this stuff was real easy, but I got sidetracked it real badly. I saw some broken nether portal, but it, it didn't have a chest. I was spending so long going around this nether portal, just tearing it apart it was already broken but now it's just ridiculed looking for one chest that could possibly have something i didn't find anything and i think that it had a chest from a mod like a certain texture and when that mod went away the chest went away next day while out looking for osmium i saw an infected with the totem this kind of infected mob can drop like a, a little claw thingy and it can pull zombies towards them zombies and other stuff that can pretty much get infected and turned into one of them it can also pull you too like it has some kind of pull to it and i i despise it I had got the osmium that i had wanted but i saw an infected pillager and i wanted to kill that so i i went up there to handle that After I was done gathering everything, I went back on my way home. Day 67, I had all the osmium that I would possibly need. So I just made my osmium dust and made my speed up thingies. I tried to use a magma block to see if the heat generators would gain more heat from it, but it actually started to cool down instead of heat up. I don't know why. So I, I had to take that off eventually. It was, it was useless. I also noticed that you could put more than one speed chip inside of a machine very nice so i tried adding another magma block to it to see if that'll work it didn't so i then went back to the broken nether portal to get lava then go back to the machine and add lava to the heat generator hoping that it'll actually give more power i'm not exactly sure if this worked but it was worth the test i guess next morning i continued to grab my gravel but i i stumbled upon this little friend Look at my guy, a little tail wag. Gonna, gonna name him like Grass. Nice. 
This day is also the day that I finally realized that the speed upgrades was actually doing more harm than good. Basically, if you use speed upgrades, you need more power and heat generators don't give that much power. They give power, but the more energy you use, the more energy you're gonna need. So I, had, I eventually just took away the speed chips. Without them, I actually produce faster. Day 69, I saw that I needed sand again for TNT, so I just got sand and made more TNT. But this whole TNT process stuff was taking God knows how long. And I was getting more fearful by each passing day of that nest just going crazy. But at this point, I had quite a bit of TNT on me, but I just, just, I, I jumped around just waiting for stuff. I, I really didn't do anything. Day 70, I got obsidian. That was literally just nothing else. Obsidian, there you go. Day 70, over. Day 71, more obsidian. <laughs> nothing, man obsidian i i could have just done something else so much more productive but obsidian day 72 i i gained more gravel and then i made some more obsidian tnt that's right you guessed it right back to obsidian farming you know what i should have did since i found out that i can make like flint and stuff like that i don't know if i did do this but i i should have like checked if i can make the obsidian with machines I don't know why I never thought of that. I probably did see it, but I just don't remember. But if I did not do it, I should have done that. Day 73 was pretty much more obsidian farming and I made more TNT and obsidian TNT. That was, that was pretty much it. Day 73 is over. Day 74, I saw some kind of evolved infected in the morning. I ended up killing that and I got more sand and gravel and that was that was that day. Day 75, I saw this little hole. I wanted to know what was inside of it, so I, I went inside of there, but I, I needed torches and I was really hoping that it was not another entry to the nest because if it was, oh boy. So I grabbed my torches and I went deeper inside and I didn't really find anything besides a zombie spawner. The spawner didn't have anything the chest didn't have anything like that besides a golden apple and some string that was really about it. More name tags, but what am I gonna do with that? I wanted a powerful bow, that way I can be able to shoot enemies from far away. So I enchanted some bows and I combined them in order to become more powerful because I didn't have any EXP. I kept hearing this like, the sound of mobs and I don't know where it was coming from and it was really bothering me. So I I dug all around this house and I, I didn't find anything. It was really annoying. Didn't find anything, so I filled it back up and I I didn't I didn't get anything. But I saw this infected that was outside what of the, the village. What are you doing? Turns out my mending dealer is dead. Um, yeah. Wait, what? No, you didn't kill He's not dead, is he? Are you kidding me? My fucking mending guy, he's dead. I can't get mending anymore. Luckily, I have it on everything, but I don't know where that infected came from. Once again, the little the mob noises was was bothering me a lot. So I, I tried to set off some TNT. Set off a little bit. I used my obsidian TNT like a an idiot. I tried to use lava to ignite the TNT, but that didn't work. So I went back to my base, got flint and steel, and then went back up there ignited the TNT only to find out this God, this TNT is like forever oh they're in the roof what the fuck they were in the roof the whole time day 76 you know yeah, woo, going nice just you know having my normal day I go inside of my aquatic base to grab some stuff that's probably I you know me I saw this yeah. when I was exiting my base. Oh no. Oh no. It happened. It came. I I, I called it. Is it it's coming towards me. Okay. What the Okay, bows work on it at least. 
Towards me, yeah, yeah, come right towards me. I see, I see. What do you want me? Yeah, yeah, pretty colors, pretty colors, yeah, yeah. Holy shit, okay, okay. Oh my god, it's releasing spores, okay. Come on, explode, 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 please explode. Holy shit! <laughs> what the? Please, pillagers, not now, not now. Stop. Oh my god, there's a bunch of pillagers. Holy shit, I'm actually scared right now. Is it finally up? Oh. It's climbing up. Okay. 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 All right. All right. Boy TNT. Holy shit. I'm actually sweating. Okay. I don't have any more. I don't have any more arrows. Come on. Pretty colors. Pretty colors. Come on. Oh my god. Okay, listen, we can talk about this. We can talk about this. Okay, we can talk about this. All right, you don't have to do this. All right, I'm a cool guy. You're a cool. Holy shit, it's actually coming for me. Okay, okay, okay. I have to go. I have to go. I have to go into the water. Into the water. That's the only way I can be. All right, look at this. Pretty colors. More TNT. Come on. Now you want it. It's still alive! Okay, alright. Just gotta go back in the water. Get my stuff. Okay. I'm so glad I made this underwater base. Holy shit. Okay, I have some explosion arrows. I don't have any flint in here. Guess where my flint is? It gives me time to grab this flint and make some arrows. Thirty-two arrows. Hey, my man, you like lava? I do. Here, I'll take this. Please get in it. Please get in the lava. Oh my god! <laughs> okay. I hate that this thing is able to break blocks. It's so dumb. Why did they allow that? No one will know. I should make like quicksand or something. created this big crater from the obsidian TNT. And guess what he did? Got up from it like it was nothing. Okay. Another one? Okay. All right. There's a problem. I have another one. Holy shit. What am I supposed to do in this situation? Okay, I have an idea. I have an idea. Just maybe. I'm, I may die for it. We're gonna see. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go under. Okay. Okay, that guy takes three hearts per hit. Okay, never mind. After seeing this huge disaster, I was like, it's not happening without these arrows. I wanted to do ranged attacks because they take three hearts per hit. And the pillagers is raiding the village too. 
which can be a good distraction, sure. But you have to remember that if it kills them, it's also going to infect them, making the infected army even bigger than it already is. So I gathered my most important machines that I needed in order to make the TNT that I needed. So I, I ended up just remembering my place, my home, and then I left. The saddest part about it all is just leaving my cat, but I was determined to slay the boss and get back what I lost, take back my home. So the new goal, instead of taking the nest, it was taking the boss. So day 77, I went out, I found another village. I learned about the Fletcher. I actually never knew this thing existed. I, I, I never knew it and it sells arrows, 16 of the arrows for one emerald. And I knew how to get emeralds real easily already. I also wanted a new mending dealer for my bows and stuff like that. And I got the mending dealer. <gasps> in one try i got a new mending dealer that easily i'm such a god at this game i got the mending dealer that easily very easy i'm just a legend next morning i saw some pillagers and i was once again not about it i wasn't gonna do it so i just left them alone hoping they wouldn't follow me i went to get clay that way i can trade it with the mason trade with mason then get more arrows I also learned that I can trade sticks for emerald, which again, I've never known that. So that's even easier to get than clay. I was happy, but while it was starting to get dark, I put back down my two machines. That way I can continue the producing or the production of TNT. I don't know why I spent so much time getting TNT. If I wasn't even gonna really need it like that, I should have just focused on arrows instead. That way I can kill the bosses real easily. No problem. I could have killed those bosses like day 80 something. If I just, anyways, day 79, I found the lava pool and I wanted to make more obsidian. That way I can get obsidian TNT. I could also make lightning arrows. I didn't make lightning arrows before because lightning, lightning arrows don't work underground because for lightning arrows to work, you actually need the sky which makes sense. But since the bosses were on the surface, it made sense to actually use it. And the bosses, I meant war with them. I took all of this heavily personally. So I knew I had to go all out and work two times harder. At the end of day 79, I made more lightning arrows. Day 80, in the morning, I ran into some infected. Great time to actually test out my lightning arrows too. I gathered copper, a lot of copper, because, you know, for the lightning arrows, you need rods, and then put the arrows around the rods and you get lightning arrows. After making the rods and stuff, I just mined obsidian. I don't know what it is with me and this obsidian, but day 81 was short lived. I collect some copper, I made some lightning arrows, did my usual TNT producing production stuff, and then it, it had a thunderstorm, so, yeah, day 81 was really short lived. Day 82, I continued making as much lightning arrows and TNT as I could make. I saw an infected come out of nowhere, so I, I killed that. Then went over to where it, where I thought it came from, and I saw this little ditch, but I didn't see anything out of it, so I didn't think anything was unordinary, so I left it alone. Afterwards, I just made some lightning arrows and TNT slept through that day day 83 was nothing special just me once again wasting so much time on obsidian however something tragic happened very very tragic happened
managed to make it back to my aquatic base and I just sat there chilling with my cat. Once the sun was starting to rise, I ran all the way back to the other village. But once I got back to the village, I got right back to my usual thing, getting obsidian. Day 85. I continued to get more obsidian, but I needed some more gravel and sand to make a normal TNT. At the end of the day, I saw some infected near the village and I quickly handled that because if that infected infects anyone inside of the village, it becomes a domino effect and everybody inside of the village is infected and it creates a huge new nest or swarm. Next day, it was raining and I saw a Vindicator, but I decided to challenge it. Considering the amount of armor that I had, it, it couldn't possibly hurt me. But it got distracted on some squid, so I managed to handle it. And it didn't really hurt, even though it touched me once. Okay. While I was getting gravel, I noticed a bunch of the fish around me just like dying for no reason. So I decided to find out what the issue was, what was killing the fish. So I swam to the bottom. <laughs> I did not like what I found. There was another nest forming at the new village that I was staying at, but I saw something worse. <laughs> that ditch that I saw, it, it's filled now, just full of the infected stuff. I, I left this, I, I checked this for like what, a day? Like a day or two ago? And it, it's terrible, it looks this bad. So I knew I was running out of time and I was in a like full panic at this point. Even inside of my full panic, I continue to do what I was normally doing. Getting as much TNT, arrows, and other stuff like that. So day 88, I tried to see if I could set the, the, the little fungus, the spores. I tried to see if I can actually set those on fire, which they did light up. Yeah, sure. And one would stay on fire, but the yeah, fire wouldn't fire spread fire. and actually stay. So my idea of burning up the nest that that didn't really exactly yeah that not gonna happen so for the rest of the day i just continued getting sticks trading it and getting arrows you know the whole fletcher thing day 89 i needed to get more gravel to make flint and as i was getting flint i got scared by one of the infected exploding god that explosion is getting closer and closer while I was making my TNT, doing my thing, it was starting to get dark, so I, I, I tried to sleep, but no, really, no, really? no, no not, way, not what the game wants me to do. That's not happening. So I once again had to make a full sprint back to my aquatic base. Holy shit, that's a lot of infected. That's a lot of infected. I might be dead. Move. Okay, 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 okay. I have to get out of here. I have to get out of here. I have to get out of here. Please, please. That's a lot of infected. That's a lot of infected. Okay, 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 okay. I can do it. I can make it. Stop. Please stop. I have to make it over this mountain into my aquatic base. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I refuse to go out like this. Come on, day 89. There's no way. Wow. These arrows. I'm gonna need that. No! 
Okay. I managed to make it back into my aquatic base though. And I sat out the night again. On day 88, I told myself that I would give myself to day 90 to start the war and obliterate these bosses and take back what they took from me. It was day 90 now, meaning it's officially time to start this war. The area that I was in was just way too laggy. So I wanted to drag them away from that spot. This, this day was, just <laughs> look at this. Holy shit. Okay. I didn't know I could do that. It's not good. I nearly fucking died. They just keep dropping spores, please. Pretty much how the whole day went. Remember I told you the 
little pillager with the totem, yeah, just pulls you right in. Easily obliterate you. I found out that you can make this bow called the living bow. You just use parts of the infected. And I really wanted that because it deals damage. And I wanted to upgrade that, use it against the boss. So my next goal was to make that. But day 91, I ran into some issues with the infected. so close that was so fucking close it's not even funny how close it was i nearly died from that little small army of evolved infected i saw some more infected and i wanted to handle that shit because again my ward my world is already being taken over why would i want it taken over even more so i killed the little infected that was there quite a bit I set off some TNT because breaking the blocks was just gonna take too long. I may have nearly died, but luckily I made it out. My war was not over. No, no, it was just getting started. Day 92, I spent it trying to get the, the parts that I needed for the living bow. It's kind of expensive, but at the same time, not. It's also pretty easy to get considering the amount of infected there is around my house. But the hard part is kind of surviving with the different types of variants there is with these infected. finally got the last piece that I had needed. I don't remember what piece it was that I even needed in the first place, but I finally got it, which is nice. Very good. I was very happy. 
So I went back to my other village, my backup home. The plan was to make this living bow. It's more powerful than the normal bow, and I wanted to enchant it too. I had someone to give mending, but I also wanted another person to give me power or something, maybe just flame. But to get the mending book, I needed to have a book. I went out to look for a cow. I ended up getting leather I needed, but I killed the horse instead. I found out that I can get paper from tree bark and all I needed was a cutting board. When you use the cutting board, you have to put down a log. You put down the log on the cutting board, then you right click it and you get tree bark. Use the tree bark, you get paper. Very simple stuff. So after I was done making my paper and stuff, I made the little parts that I needed for the living bow. I put all that together and now I had a living bow. I threw away my enchanted bow that had like power two or something like that if i remember correctly and then i made me a book next day i got the emeralds that i needed in order to get the mending book i needed to get you know to an anvil in order to apply the mending to my bow and for me to do that i needed to get all the way back to my aquatic base but before i decided to go to my aquatic base i wanted to get another book from a villager that would give me some kind of enchantment that i wanted for my bow to include with the mending. This, <laughs> this, this did not go well. Every book was useless. Every single one of them. They had some like unbreaking, but I wanted power and yeah, no, it just, it didn't give me anything like that. So at night of day 94 and the entirety of day 95, I got nothing. I even got mending again from another guy. I got mending. And I just, I couldn't get anything. Day 96, I wanted to make another blast furnace because the blast furnace that I had at my base was just way too laggy. And I wanted the whole process of making like smelted anything to be faster. But I gathered a bunch of copper that I needed in order to make a lot, a lot of lightning rods. So I gathered the copper that I needed, went back home to my second home and made a blast furnace. After I made my blast furnace, I stuck all of my copper inside of there, but I needed coal. I was running low on coal, so I went out to get coal, went back up there, and did what I needed to do. The next morning, I went to the villager and I traded the emeralds. I traded sticks for emeralds and then traded those emeralds for more arrows. I was getting stacked on arrows. I was I was pretty much Elon Musk or like Bill Gates, but with arrows. It, I was I was stacked. It was starting to rain though, so I always bring out a bed or a sleeping bag once it starts to rain, just to make sure it's not a thunderstorm. Luckily, I did this because it was gonna be a blood moon. Day 98, I had to fight off this huge horde on the way back to my old house because I wanted to go to my old house to apply mending to my new bow. But this horde, it just, it did not stop. It kept spawning more spores and more infected. And you know what I've said about if you don't maintain it, Get off of me. I don't even know why they're so fast. I love starting off my day like this. Why me? Why? Why? Stop. What was even your plan there? Oh, so Y'all are making me waste all of my ammo. Okay, man. I need this for the boss, please. And I can't have y'all turn into a boss either.
Okay, okay, okay. I don't have time for this, okay? Stop. And there's poison and more spores. And I think the sun is about to set, so... It was nice fucking with you guys, but... I gotta go now. Because I... Somehow and glitched a through a blood moon, moon and slept. I was assuming that I was gonna have right. yet another blood moon. I was, I was right. <laughs> so I ran into my base, my little aquatic no. base, and I sat there. But there was so much more infected, and my base was falling apart because the infected would touch the glass and it would break. While the cameras was off, I'm sad to say that my cat it it ended up getting obliterated while the moon was oh. setting and the sun was rising. Yeah. This, what is happening? This absolute what is happening? horde, what is this? this gigantic horde was just standing Dog, in front like of me and I wanted to take it down. I wanted to take down the horde and the bosses. I wasn't going to sleep through this day either. I wanted to stay up and survive. Okay. That was the goal. That was the mission. Come on, move. I can't swim. I can't go to sleep. I won't allow myself to go to sleep this time. You guys like TNT? I do. Come on, blow up, blow up, blow up, blow up, blow up, blow up. It's not. I won't count that as a loss. In my book, that was an absolute win. I was definitely going to kill the bosses and win if it wasn't for the lag. You see all of this? All of this stuff is the cause of the lag. But it was fun while it lasted. I actually did enjoy my time. And I stand corrected in my head. This challenge is no easy feat. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you didn't, take your anger out on the like button and sub button. I'll see you around next time.